Benoit, you're very well known in the NetFlow community. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background on NetFlow? When did you get involved? So I, I always had a passion for uh, network management and monitoring accounting performance. And, and I joined Cisco in 96 as a customer support engineer. Uh, and there I was in the NMS team supporting the applications and, and the protocol. But I, NetFlow was the obvious one for me, right, in, for, for monitoring and uh, accounting and performance because you could do so many things with that. It, it's, it's so cool and many researchers like that. But, but, but when was that already? Actually, it was already 96 because NetFlow was invented by Cisco in 96. I was trying to research this for someone else recently and, and, and uh, the first CPAL on NetFlow was 96. Um, what I remember from that time is something called label switching or flow switching that Cisco was working on as well. Is there a relation with NetFlow and that technology at that time? So uh, flow switching, yes. Label switching came later with, uh, with MPLS. Uh, but it's true at that time NetFlow was not only a monitoring tool, it was there as a switching path, right? So uh, these days it has been replaced by what, what we call Cisco uh, by Express Forewarning, Cisco Express Forewarning. Yeah. And NetFlow become only a monitoring feature. But was NetFlow designed originally to be a monitoring or was it a buy effect of, say, this flow switching? That's interesting. It was a switching path initially, but uh, we saw a couple of people telling, actually, right now I'm in big trouble. My network is not behaving correctly. And they would look at NetFlow stats to see what's happening. So that's where it slowly became a monitoring tool. And then we found out new, more, uh, switch, more effective switching paths, and then NetFlow was becoming just there for monitoring. If you look at that development, it uh, reminds me a bit to what you see nowadays with OpenFlow. If you look at OpenFlow, it's also kind of switching technology, but do you see the potential that OpenFlow moves to NetFlow? or What is the relationship between NetFlow and OpenFlow or flow switching? So first of all, there is the name flow in there, but I think that's about it, mm -hmm. because uh, OpenFlow is some way a, a way for a controller to, uh, to, to have the, the FIP entry in a switch telling, if you see that packet with that MAC address, do uh, uh, forward this to port A, for example. So that's the control plane uh, management, while NetFlow is there for monitoring. So uh, there is some confusion about the name, but I see them there in two, different, two completely different parts. But, but couldn't it be that at a certain moment people say in the open flow community, hey, we have also this flow table and let's count now how many packets we see for a certain flow and try to export it like NetFlow is doing? We could, but if you see like the controller and the switch, right, in, in the open flow world, the switch is like stupid. Mm -hmm. Right, so the, the intelligence and what to forward is there in the controller. But what we still need to do on, on any uh, accounting and performance is this switch there will, will have to tell us. From the data part point of view, this is what I see, right? So the intelligence of the open flow is in the controller, but we still want to see this from the switch point of view. So somehow this is the open flow controller going down and net flow from the switch itself. So maybe there is a need to, to export uh, the open flow table from the controller yeah. and compare that. Uh, right now, uh, there is no work on this, I believe. Okay, let's, let's go back to the history of, uh, say, NetFlow. Has there been mm -hmm. NetFlow version one? And yes, we had NetFlow version one, and then five, and even a six for a specific customer, and a seven on the switch, and a version eight with router-based aggregation version 9, and finally IP fix here, the ITF, which is, and that's funny because the version field is not 1, it's 10. It's right? 10. Well, why is it 10? It's 10 because in the ITF we wanted to standardize existing practice, and we were looking at existing practice, and we had like five candidates, and one of them was NetFlow version 9, and, uh, and by the way, we, we have we've got an information, informational RFC on that, explaining how we did it. And whenever you look at uh, NetFlow version 9 IP fix, they're quite similar because both have been evolving. And uh, that's the reason why IP fix is 9 plus 1. Okay, let me go back to NetFlow version 5 because mm -hmm. that is uh, something you still see quite often. 
why is natural version 5 so popular? Is it still being you know, delivered by uh, Cisco? Or? We, we, we still have it. The, the beauty of version 5 is that you can just enable it and you would have like the, the default flow record in there. And, uh, and that works fine for most of the cases. However, we have to look at the different fields that are in there, which are mainly uh, version 4, with some accounting, some timestamping, some routing information. Then you have to think, what are the use cases I could solve with that? And, and whenever you want to have some more interesting use cases, you need to move away from v5. Typically, I want to monitor IPv6. Well, natural version 5 is a fixed format. It's not in there. So you need something else. If you want to monitor MPLS, same thing. BGP Next Hub, same thing. And the way I, I, I used to think about it, I mean, the, the, the way I think about it is, I sit down with my customer and say, what do you want to do? Do you want to do security or capacity planning? or billing, or monitoring. And from there, I ask the questions, IPv4, IPv6, and PLS, uh, or only uh, BGP. And I just start to write down the fields that they would need in the ID report. And from there, I'm able to say, well, version 5 will not be good enough. You might need to have Netflow version 9 or uh, IPfix. But there's, at this moment, for customers, for new products, there's the option to either choose version 5 or version 9? That's correct, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, what about the intermediate versions? Or is how you should just focus on 5 or 9? So we still have uh, also NetFlow version 8, which is like an aggregation on the router. Some people don't care about specific IP addresses in v5, but they want to have like per network, per prefix. Right, so there's an aggregation of all the IP addresses. It's still there. What I advise the people to do is, as I said, to look at the use case they have, to deduce the fields, and then I will tell them what they need. Now, we need to make a, a distinction because NetFlow is a confusing term. It means at the same time the export protocol mm -hmm. and the metering process, right? And, and somehow, whenever people say, do you support NetFlow? The answer is always yes. And whenever I speak to collectors, people, the answer is always yes. But I advise my customer to ask the right question. Which export protocol do you, do you uh, support? Is this V5, V8, V9 IPfix? And then in the metering process part, what do you support? What I call traditional NetFlow with just the version 5 field or flexible NetFlow in which you can really choose the feed that you want to. What is, uh, you already introduced now the term flexible NetFlow. What's exactly the difference between, say, NetFlow version 9, uh, flexible NetFlow, and IPfix? Right. So if you take this, this distinction of exporting process and metering process, and we made that clear in the standard here in IPfix, so in the exporting process, we have the export protocol version 5, version 8, version 9 IPfix. Right, and we could review the differences. And then in the metering process, we've got traditional NetFlow or flexible NetFlow. The, the, the advantage of flexible NetFlow is that as an end user, if you care about security, for example, then maybe you will just select the fields like the TCP flags or the ICMP code and things like that. And you would really tailor the flow records for your needs. Right? And then whenever you've got this, you've got your flow records in your cache and your device, you need to choose a way to export them. And again, depending on which field you have, you might be forced to use version 9 or IPfix. A typical example is uh, in the latest uh, in IPfix, and IPfix is, as we discussed, this, this is a standard here in the IETF. There is a feature called uh, variable length encoding. Typically, if you export a URL, what is the length? On top of my head, I think it could be even 64K, right? But if you don't have this variable length field, it means that do you want to send every single time 64K in every single flow record it, and do, uh, you know, padding in there? It's a waste. So this feature is pretty useful to say, hmm, the lengths will be variable, so I will be efficient. And typically, if I, if I would say, uh, if I would ask my customer, do you require the URL? in your metering process, if the answer is yes, I would say, then you must be using IPfix. Now, I also tell my customer that one day, sooner or later, they will have to move away from V5. At the very minimum, 
V9. And if you want to have those extra features like security and, and variable lengths, they must have to go to IPFix. So IPFix is security extra lengths, or are there more difference between version 9 and IPFix? So there are a couple of differences. Uh, okay, we spoke about variable lengths information element. Uh, we register all the information elements with IANA. There is security there. There is a choice of transport. Uh, NetFlow is mainly UDP based, right? Because we have to export a lot of flows, and really a lot. Lately, we have a platform with 13 million flow records in hardware, mm -hmm. right? So we have to push them. We've got this little problem that the routers left to route, right? Uh, but to come back to transport, uh, Using UDP over the internet is just not good enough for an organization like the ITF. The transport must be conscious and aware. So if you look at the difference between NetFlow version 9 and IPFix, IPFix imposes that SCTP is the transport. So the Stream Control Transport Protocol is the must uh, use transport, while UDP and TCP are a may transport. But is SCTP used in practice? So, uh, if, if I talk about my company, we had an implementation of SCTP with Central version 9, and we have seen in practice that it was not that much used. Now, we have to, to understand why. So, uh, we could separate the use cases into security, capacity planning, simply monitoring, application visibility, or billing, right? And, and the last one is where you want to have a reliability of your export, uh, your, your exported packets. And this is in that area that we see uh, some requests for SCTP, and we start to see some more in that area. Okay. Um, if you look at uh, version 9, it is uh, described also in RFC, uh, 3954, if I remember well. You do. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you get nowadays a version 9, product from Cisco. Is it precisely according to this RFC? Because the RFC is already quite old. Or has version uh, 9 evolved and is CD954 just yeah, uh, something created x years ago? No, it, it's still compatible, right? Uh, we, we might have some more extensions. Like we did this uh, SCTP export with version 9. It's in, the, in, in some routers these days. Uh, but the, the basic NetFlow version 9, which is, and maybe you could explain this very quickly, is, is a template-based mechanism, right? From the router I'm going to send to the collector, this is all the template I'm going to use. For example, a destination IP address, bytes, and, and number of packets. And all the subsequent uh, packets will say, oh, this is a template ID and all the fields. So this mechanism remains. It's still valid. It's still according to that RFC 3954. Yes, there are some more extensions that have been also uh, identified in some subsequent RFCs in IPFix. Okay. Um, how is Cisco looking at IPFix? Will it ultimately give up NetFlow version 5 to 9 and focus all new activities on IPFix? Or will they have NetFlow in parallel to IPFix? My goal is to have IPFix all over the place, right? If, if we take this from a higher level point of view, uh, okay, we all love NetFlow as a protocol, but if I speak with customers, NetFlow became like a transport protocol. What they care more about is on which type of use case they could solve, which information element they could have. So somehow this transport, it's like, I don't like the term because it's a kind of reducing term, but the transport is not that important. But I would like to have IP fix all over the place, and that's a goal. Now we have to see which use case they need, I mean, which use case will force them to move. If they've got IPv6, they have to move away from V5 to V9. If they want variable lengths, and this is what we see right now with this URL, for example, yeah. they will have to move to IP fix. So I'm just telling them, be prepared, because you will have to move there. Are there still functions that you would like to add to IPFix? Or is it complete and everything is there? So we started this in 2001 in the ITF. So uh, I'm thinking that, and by the way, uh, great timing because this protocol RFC, which is uh, 5101 for IPFix, we had this 5101 bis that became an internet standard. 
like recently, a couple of weeks ago, and it's now uh, sitting in the RFC Turkey, and we'll be, we will have this new RFC uh, pretty soon. And I requested just for the, the sake of it, if we could request the 7101 okay. instead of 5101. So we'll see. Um, so maybe it's time to pause a little bit there and say, this was a great journey, right? Uh, yes, we could extend this, but I think that now we've got plenty of RFC with extension, and uh, maybe it's time for the industry to adopt this. All the questions you had, like, are we moving from V5 to V9 to IP fix? Well, the customers are, but it's going to take some time. Now, do I want to have new features in, in IP fix? I believe that the value now is in defining the information elements correctly uh, in, in the INI registry. And uh, we start to see that IP fix moved away from something which is specific to flow to become a more generic push mechanism, right? So uh, what I would like to see is more in that area. For example, can we have a good registry of performance metrics, right? We have many proprietary uh, ex export of uh, uh, information elements. But if you would have like this fine registry that would be also exported with IP fix, that would be great. Okay. You are now area director for the operations and management area. Um, how do you like that? Well, it's a, it's a busy job, right? Uh, and I'm laughing because there is one guy behind this, the, the, this camera there who, who told me, you sucker. <laughs> I did, <laughs> but uh, but somehow you you're able to make a difference slowly because you have to learn to learn the job. But uh, I believe that this is important, so we could see this at different levels. Uh, okay, somehow you're responsible for the, the quality of the documents, specifically in your area, right? So you're responsible also for working group management and uh, in which direction should uh, the the potential new working group go. Uh, but I see that uh, for myself, I have uh, somehow some missions there, right? I discussed the performance metrics. I would like to get that fixed. Uh, another one is that I, I believe that we make this internet thingy way too complex and unmanageable. We see plenty of new features, new protocol, etc. But I believe that people don't think early, early enough what it takes to manage this. And whenever they've got their protocol, they move on. And one of my mission, I believe, is to remind them, sometimes with a baseball bat, <laughs> to remind them that manageability is important, right? And if we could uh, try to influence that earlier, that, that, that's better. Uh, so uh, that, that's about it for, for, for the AD. Okay. So, sounds like a challenging uh, mission. Uh, wish you success, and uh, thanks for the interview. You're very welcome.